fiery horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi-oh, silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster! I will fill the In the days of the early western frontier, there were two forces. There were men who realized the vast opportunity for development and progress in the new country. And there were others who saw only the chance to prey upon their fellow men without fear of any organized resistance. Eventually, the pioneers learned that it was necessary to fight fire with fire. And throughout the West went the call for professional gunmen. Fabulous prices were paid for the services of such glamorous gunslingers as Wyatt Earp, Wild Bill Hillcock, and many others whose prowess with a six-gun contributed to the colorful pageantry of the West. Such was the calling of Smiley Royson. As the lean, sharp-eyed rider reined his horse to a stop oh, before oh. the hotel in Twin oh. Forks, there was just one vacant place at the hitch rail. <laughs> well, old horse, this is the place, I reckon. Now, you just stay put while I hunt up this dowdy. Then we'll see about getting you some oats and hay, huh? Hey, young fella, you better not tie your pony in that place. Huh? What's wrong with this place? Ain't reserved, is it? You'll think it is if Bud Kramer pops up. Yeah. Ain't nobody ties up at that end of the rail, except in Kramer. Yeah, I see what you mean, partner. Only that's been changed. Ain't you heard? Huh? What do you mean? Since when? Since me and old Sugarfoot here arrived in Twin Forks about two minutes ago. Huh, horse? <laughs> yes, sir. From now on, this place on the hitch rail is reserved for Mr. Kramer and me. Say, you're talking kind of brash, youngster. Uh-huh. Awful, ain't it? You just wait till... Hey... You better move that pony pronto. Here comes Kramer now. Maybe he'll give you a job holding his horse, old-timer. Hey, hey there. You, mister. Well? Steady, boy. That's your horse tied on the end of that rail? Uh, he ain't mine exactly. I stole him from a poor old widow woman up north. You? Ah. Uh, Been figuring to sell him as soon as I can steal me a better one. Kind of a smart Jasper, huh? Well, you're tied up in my place. Now get that horse out of there. Uh, look, I gotta see a fellow in the hotel. You get him out if you want to. Just turn him loose. You're dang well tootin', I'll turn him loose. Here. Here, hold still, you blasted critter! <laughs> look out, Kramer! Boy, that mangy devil tried to stomp me. That's the trouble with these stolen horses. A fella just can't rely on them. It's the last time I'm telling you. Get that horse off on the hitch rail. Uh, now look, Wendy. I got business to tend to. 
So if you want that horse moved, move him yourself. Only be careful how you reach for his head, because you'll be buying gloves for one hand. I'm looking for a man named Dougherty. Supposed to meet him here at the hotel. Uh, yes, sir. That's Mr. Doherty coming up to the desk now. Was you asking for me, young fella? I was asking for Frank Dougherty. Well, that's my name. And yours? Roizen. Roy... You? You, Smiley Roizen? Why, shucks, you ain't no more than a boy. I uh, usually draw a man's wages, Mr. Dougherty. reason I sent for you, Roizen, I've heard you were... Sort of handy with a pair of 45s. Maybe you also heard that I'm a very expensive handyman. Now, huh, Dowdy? Here's the picture, Ryzen. When this community was started, there was just a little mining here and there, and the town was supposed to be one of those temporary camps. Now we've got a mighty big cattle industry started in the valley, and the town's growing up. I might say getting too big for its britches. Yeah? Ryzen, we're desperately in need of a man like you. Someone who can put the lid down and keep it there. We ain't you got no sheriff around here? <laughs> yeah, we did have. Had a sheriff for six months. Then found out he was taking our money and at the same time drawing higher wages from the very men we were fighting against. Hmm. I've heard a lot about you, Roizen. Some good and some bad. <clears throat> Among which I've heard that you shoot square. We couldn't afford to hire another double-crosser. Mm-hmm. How much can you afford for me? Well, we've got a thousand dollars, Nick Kitty. It's yours if you'll take the job for one month. After that. Sorry, Mr. Downey. For that kind of money, I ain't interested. You raise the ante to twenty five hundred, and I'm your man. Twenty five hundred Man alive, that's big money. Yeah, I know. But I uh, spend a lot on ammunition. Sometimes I run out of ammunition. And that's when I have a lot of doctor bills to pay. Yeah, I was afraid you'd want more than we could afford. Royce and I, I can't promise you something we haven't got, but uh, will you take $1,000 now and 1500 later if we can manage? Nope, I'm in the wrong business to give credit. I'm going down to the livery stable and feed my horse. If you want me, I'll be around for a couple hours, maybe. I'd just like to know if Mr. Dougherty really is hard up like he says, or if he's trying to... Hey. You, uh, looking for something, stranger? Yeah, I'm looking for the horse I left here a while back. This ain't the one. Mm -hmm. No, that's Bud Kramer's horse. What happened to... I suppose it'd be plumb silly for me to ask if Kramer cut this tie string. Well, that horse he owned wouldn't let him untie it, so he cut her, like you see. Reckon your horse didn't wander very far, though. Sugarfoot won't wander. Yeah, that pony sure learned some good manners. From that widow woman you was talking about. Uh-huh. Oh. If you keep your eyes open, you might see that same widow woman learning some good manners to the man that cut this horse loose. Get up. Come on. I reckon we'd better go hide your head in a bucket of oats, Sugarfoot. Because you're too young to watch what happens to Brother Kramer. <laughs> he sure was burning up when he found you'd got his horse loose from the rail, Kramer. Yeah, that fresh young squirt. I should have boxed his ears for him, that's what. <laughs> I was just getting ready to paste him one in front of the hotel when he walked away. <laughs> Here you are. Three aces. Thanks for the pot, boys. Kramer. Oh, you again, huh? You, uh, looking for trouble, maybe? I'll take the pot, boys. Looks like there's just enough to pay for the damage this lizard under my bridle leather. Oh, well, you own her. Oh. Hey, you must have tripped on something, Wendy. Try again. So help me, I'll break your neck. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Sure are a clumsy cuss, Wendy. Can't keep him falling over your own feet. Let's see if you're as handy with those guns you're packing. Hey, hey, what? You back there. Keep your hands where they belong. You was lucky, stranger. My gun's stuck in the holster. You make another pass at that shooting iron gambler, and you'll never know if you had a gun in your holster. I'll meet up with you again, fella. Next time, it'll be different. It sure will, Wendy. Only you won't know the difference. Uh, Mr. Roy. 
Patterson? Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Dar... Uh, I mean... Hello. I was really hoping you'd change your mind, Smiley. I did? I mean, you did? I'm only sorry that we couldn't afford to pay... Oh, by the way, this is uh, my daughter. Louise, this is Smiley Royson. How do you do, Mr. Royson? I... Well, uh... I mean... Oh, by the way, I heard about your uh, encounter with Bud Kramer. Too bad you couldn't stay long enough to finish the job. Gee, Willikers, she's beautiful. What's that? I said uh, uh, that fella Kramer is just a two-bit tin horn. Oh, you think so? Well, you'd find out differently if you'd stay in Twin Forks a while. As a matter of fact, Mr. Dowdy, I was just now considering that very thing. You were? You, you mean you'd take the job at our price? Sure, sure, your price, my price... Anybody's price. Oh, say, that's great. Now you can really give that Kramer bunch of going over. Kramer? Well, certainly. But Kramer's the man I told you about. The rotten crook has had this town eating out of his hand. In that case, Mr. Dowdy, I'm raring to get to work. Fine, fine. You hear that, Louise? Smiley's going to stay and clean up this rip-roaring town so it'll be a fit place to live in once more. Ain't that wonderful news? Yes, Father. And uh, I'm sure that Mr. Royson will accomplish whatever he sets out to do. Lady, I sure hope you're right. Darkness came swiftly to the prairie land, and just as the last faint trace of daylight was fading into twilight, a pair of stalwart horsemen rode up to a shallow water hole and dismounted. Steady there. Come easy. All right, Silver. Here, I got this bridle off so you can enjoy your first drink since morning. Ah, that plenty long ride. Horses plenty thirsty. Well, they can drink this water hole dry if they want to. They have enough water in our canteen to care. Listen, rider coming, Cotto. Ah, uh, me see him. Come from north. We go? No, we can see him. He probably sees us. Let's wait and find out who it is. He's wearing two guns, Cotto. Hello there. Oh, oh, hold up there. Any water left in that hole? We could sure do with a... Yes, there's water. It's fit only for your horse. Here, you're welcome to our canteen. Hey, your name don't happen to be Kern, does it? Well, that's a personal question. What if it is? Oh, nothing, only I figured since you was... Wearing a mask? Well, yeah. A masked man doesn't usually identify himself to everyone. I knew who you are. Oh, Roy Barton from up north. If you ain't Kern, it don't mean a thing to you. It uh, might mean a great deal, Barton. Here. After all, I've never met you personally. Uh, likewise here, Mr. Kern. But I reckon we'll get along all right together. Uh, thanks for the use of your canteen. This engine work for you? It works with me. Uh, now what about that meeting you spoke of in your letter? I've been pushing my horse pretty hard all day so as I'd get here on time. The, uh, meeting will be held as scheduled, Barton. Uh -huh. Yeah, still a good while before midnight. You and the Redskin riding south, maybe? No, no, not for a while. Uh -huh. Thought maybe you'd ride along and show me where that shack is. Just follow the directions in the letter, Barton. You can't miss the place. Right. Come on, Toto. Uh, See the big fella. Easy. Not easy. See you at midnight, Barton. Yeah. All right. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come oh. I thought that Kern Ambre sounded mysterious in his letter. He's even more puzzling to talk to. Well, I should worry just so as he's able to pay off. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. It was just three hours later. Smiley Royson entered the cafe and gambling house operated by Bud Kramer. It was Kramer who came forward to meet him. Hi there. Been wanting to talk to you. Yeah? Well, here, Kramer. You can read this first. And hang it up where all your customers can look it over. Setting out to do the job up brown, huh, Royson? That's right. Now, what's on your mind? Well, look. In the first place, if I'd have known who you was and what you'd come to Twin Forks for, I wouldn't have never mixed with you this afternoon, see? So? You come to this town for one reason. To make money with them six guns you're packing. Smiley, I can give you a pretty good raise in pay if you want to listen to my proposition. I can't handle but one job at a time, Kramer. And when I get through with the one I'm working on, you ain't going to be able to make anybody any kind of a proposition. Don't even want to hear my offer, huh? You better study that notice, Kramer, because I had it printed mostly for your benefit. You're barking up the wrong tree, Smiley. What goes on around this town ain't none of my concern. But running this cafe is. If you think... I'm you... thinking your cafe takes in too much territory. Here, Joe. Put this notice up where everybody can read it. Yeah. What's it say? Notice to lawbreakers. Twin Forks can now operate without your company. There ain't much room in the jailhouse, but there's plenty of room in Boot Hill. Signed, Smiley Royson. Now listen to me. You men make it your business to stay away from Smiley Royson, you hear? What for, Kern? Because I'm telling you. This Royson fellow is just plain poison with a gun. Besides, I've got somebody else hired to take care of him. Who? A man who's got just as much rep as Royson has. A fellow by the name of Barton. So just remember what I'm telling you and stay away from Smiley Royson. He should nab any one of you. You figure he might get curious about Mr. Kern, eh? Maybe you'd want to see who you are behind that mask. Maybe. Maybe it'd be a good idea if you were to be a little less curious yourself about who's been... Listen, someone coming. This ought to be Barton. You men cover the door. Howdy, Kern. Barton? Yeah. Come on in. Gents, this is Roy Barton. The man I was telling you about He's going to take care of some special business for us. Yeah, howdy, boy. howdy, fellas. Hey, you sure look and sound a lot different from this afternoon, Kern. Uh, what's that? Yeah, but seems you're the only one here wearing a mask. It... Well, where's the engine? Wait a minute. What are you talking about? What engine? What about this afternoon? Describe this man you met. Well, oh, ain't nothing much to describe. Big fella like you. Wearing a black mask and riding a big white stallion. Had another fellow with him, a redskin. And he said his name was Kern? Well, if he didn't come right out and say so, he sure let on like he was the man I come here to work for. Barton, I'm thinking you've pulled a mighty clumsy mistake. I don't know who you met on the trail, Hold but Hold on I... a minute. You say this Jasper wore a black mask and rode a white stallion? Yeah, that's what I said. And had an engine partner with him? Was the redskin riding a paint horse? Why, yeah, he was, sure. Kern. This thick-headed gunslinger has run smack into the lone... Hey, you, way. what's the idea? Oh, shut up. Barton, you sure made a mess of things. And if the man you met was the lone ranger, you better be as fast with your guns as you think you are, that's all. He likely followed you here. All right, quick, you men, get outside. Keep your eyes peeled. You see somebody coming, shoot first and find out who it is later. All right, come on. Scatter around, surround the shack. There ain't no time to lose. Stand fast, every one of you. It's him, the lone ranger. He's outside that window. Get him, you men, Shoot! Knock that lamp over. Put out the light. Throw down your guns and surrender, or take the consequences. Turn, you got me into this, and I'm fixing you right now. Why, oh, you muddle-headed fool, you. Hold your fire. We can't see anything to shoot at. Better surrender, or you've got the chance. I'm throwing down my gun. We quit. We had enough. Strike a light in there and keep your hands up. That lone ranger shoots too straight in the dark. There. There's your light. Keep them covered, Toto. Uh, you watch them. You must have cat's eyes, mister. How could you see the shoots are straight? My friend and I haven't fired a shot yet. You men did all the shooting among yourselves. 
All right, Toto. Come on in. We'll tie up these jackrabbits. Ah, look there. Kern. Him and Barton, both dead on the doornail. I ran into your friend Barton earlier today. He ain't no friend of mine. Hadn't been for that dumbbell, you'd never found this place. Oh? Who is this man, Kern? Ain't no one ever seen him without a mask on his face. We just took orders from him. He sent for Barton there to take care of Smiley Royson. Royson? Yeah. You know him? He's acting United States Marshal at Twin Forks. Mm -hmm. Otto, get these men outside to their horses. I want to look behind that mask on Mr. Kern's face... And then we're all taking a ride to Twin Forks. In his temporary office at Twin Forks, Smiley Royson received a visitor early next morning. Oh, Miss Dougherty. Right pleased to see you. Hello, Mr. Royson. I I just had to come and see you. Well, shucks, I reckon I'd have come to see you if you hadn't. Oh, I mean, uh, that, well... Uh... It's about Father. He, He's missing. Huh? How do you mean, missing? I'm terribly afraid. Someone may have learned that it was he who sent for you and, and tried to get revenge on him. Hmm. How long has he been gone? Since last evening, early. He, well, he's been away from home before until late at night, but... This is the first time he's failed to return. I, I'm i terribly afraid. Shucks, now, don't you fret. We'll find your daddy for you, Miss Louise. Oh, you better step in the next room. Yonder comes Brother Kramer. Oh, well, what do Scoot. you think? Scoot, he's got a couple of fellows with him. They smell like trouble to me. All right, but please be careful, will you, Smiley? Sure, don't you fret now. Howdy, Royson. Howdy yourself, Kramer. What's on your mind? Yeah, these fellas here have been craving to meet the new marshal, it seems. Yeah. They look to me like they should have met a United States marshal a long time ago. Uh, yeah. They did. They've uh, met several, in fact. So? Uh-huh. They're old. All right, get him! <laughs> They won't be meeting any more, Marshals Kramer. Neither will you. No, 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 wait, Royson. You cheap tin horn. I know you're packing a shoulder gun. Grab for it. I do no good. I guess I'd better sit down and spell. Feel kind of... That's, it's ever so much better. Oh, Smiley, I, I was so frightened when you... When I took a nosedive? Shucks, I never could stand the sight of blood. At least the way it's not my own blood. Oh, we better figure out how we're going to find your dad. Because I reckon I'll have to break the news to him. That he's got to surrender his beautiful daughter to the, um, acting United States Marshal. Hey, what in the... Heavens, those men, Smiley. One of them is wearing a mask. Do you Pass think... me that gun belt, Louise. Looks like my work around here is just beginning. You stay here. I'll go out. You there, with a mask. What kind of a party is this? You, Smiley Royzen. That's me. These three men are what's left of the Kern gang. The other two back there are Kern and a man named Barton. Both dead. Kern gang? I never heard of them. Kern's the one wearing the mask. Yeah? What about yourself? What gang you from? I'll explain about myself in a moment. First, you better get these prisoners inside. If you'll give Tonto the keys, he can lock them up. Uh, now, you fellas, get off horses. Then you march inside. Here. Here you are, Injun. Uh, me take him. Well, let's take a look at these other two Jaspers. I looked behind Kern's mask. The man's a stranger to me. Uh, well, maybe I can identify him. Here, let's see what he looks like. No. What? Do you know him? Mister, you've made a mistake, I reckon. This man is Frank Dougherty. Now, you better talk fast and tell me who you are. All right. Perhaps I can identify myself this way. What's... Huh? What's a cartridge for? It's made of silver, Smiley. A a silver bullet? Then you are the Lone Ranger. This man was known to the gang as Kern. He and Roy Barton killed each other. But it it don't make sense. 
Doherty's the one who hired me to clean up this trouble spot. Perhaps you should know that Doherty also hired Roy Barton to murder you, Smiley. What? Well, that's ridiculous. No. Evidently, the Cattleman's Group, of which Doherty was the leader, brought pressure on him to hire you to establish law and order here. Doherty sent for you because he had to. Hmm. So that's why he was so anxious to have me mix it up with Bud Kramer. Well... Who's Kramer? A cheap tin horn gambler. He's dead now. I begin to see the whole picture. So Frank Dowdy was the real brains behind the whole crooked works. To think I was just setting out now to find him. Was, was going to tell him I wanted to marry his daughter. This is going to be tough on Louise. Perhaps it won't be necessary. Here, give me that mask Dowdy's wearing. What? Smiley, what on earth is wrong? Who are these... Dad! Oh, no! Uh, Louise... I've got to tell you something. Perhaps I can tell her best, Smiley. Miss Doherty, those men who just went into the jail were all notorious criminals. Your father died in a gunfight with them. But, but you said... You... The other man here is Roy Barton, one of the worst killers in the Southwest. He and your father shot it out. Both were killed. Oh, no. Smiley has told me of your intentions. I, I think your father would have wanted you to be happy together. I wish you both a world of happiness. Mister, I'd like the privilege of shaking your hand. Thanks a lot for everything. Good luck, Smiley. Now, if you'll excuse me, I see my friend is waiting. Smiley. What? You... You shook hands with that outlaw, and... Now he, he's walking away. I... Honey, that man is the best friend the lawman ever had. Whether you know it or not... He's the best friend we'll ever have, I reckon. That's a lone ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated.